Welcome back to No But For Real, where we give you the keys to empowerment, fulfillment, and success. So this week we're going back to, uh, we went to Maryville University a few weeks back and we're at a class and Doug said something that I disagreed with and we're going to talk about that today. Good. So we always agree Should way I too much. Yeah, you might. I like this. But there is going to be some, I sure. think we're going to end up at the same place, but the way you stated, I want to get your opinion, like your real thoughts. Okay. On you told everyone in the, this class that we're all average. Oh yeah. That everyone's average. Yeah. And that at best we could be average. No. So I didn't go say ahead that. and explain. <laughs> I didn't say that. A roundabout way. That's well, kind of what I got from it. What I said was this, and I hope I said it this way because this is the way I usually say it, is that most everybody is average at most things. Mm -hmm. We're all probably good at one or two things. Above average, maybe even really far above average at one or two things. But with everything else, we're relatively average. Does that make sense? So right. your basketball player that's an, a phenomenal basketball player is good at that thing, but they're probably average or maybe, you know, people can be even below average at other things. So, but we look at somebody that can do that one thing as like, whoa, look how amazing they are. It's like, yes, they are at that. So now there are, let me, let me, hold on one second. There are exceptional individuals who are amazing at a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. but they are exceptional. And there are not many of them. Where? <laughs> <laughs> we think there are a lot of them because, um, you know, we live in a world where you, you flip a camera on like we're doing right now and, you, you know, oh, look at that, look at that person. But, we're, I mean, it's a tiny population. Sure. So if you could find, if you could, like, give a metric on everything an individual does, like all skills, yeah. everything that they do in their life. Yeah. You're saying that. If you average that out, yeah, like a total individual, like it would be average when you compare that to the entire population. Like everyone's average, except for a few. Yeah. And and it, obviously, sense. I'm saying that as a blanket statement, and it sounds very like. Well, it's vague. It, is it sounds offensive statement. to people, and I. That's why I actually say it, not to offend somebody, but to also Grab bring attention to bring the light. Like, listen. There's always somebody better than you, and at many things. And it's oh, and I think my biggest message, especially when teaching, is it's okay to be average. In other words, it's okay to be normal. That's why we have an average because that means you're just normal. And what's wrong with being normal? Yeah, yeah. I I, I kind of buy into what you're saying with uh, like especially like being able to have realistic expectations. Yes. With your skills or. Mm -hmm. Expectations. You know, expectations but also to like definitely be able to identify things that you're good at yeah and but like also being able to identify things that you're not good at mm -hmm. so if you want to make those things better you can or maybe those are things that you avoid if those are like if you're not good you know working with your hands then you probably shouldn't be sure. anything that requires you to work with your hands yeah no I don't I agree now that you're talking about it. So like when we first talked about it at that class, it was kind of along the lines of where I thought you were just saying like, we're just, everyone's average and we can only hope for that average existence. But oh, I agree no. with you that what we do need to do is find out what you're good at mm -hmm. and then basically punt everything else. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say punt it. I would say realize, okay, here's a, here's a great example. Cause I know we've all experienced this with, with teenagers. I, just the other day, before school let out, there was a kid, we were talking about college. Well, I gotta go somewhere where there's football, and of course I'm not gonna say this to him, but I'm thinking like, no, there's, I, I know you, I know your skill level at that, and you're not playing college football, right? So you're also an art teacher and a but, football scout? But he's, well, <laughs> trust me on this one, okay? Just trust I'm me sure, on this sure. <laughs> If we use some names, you'd be like, oh. Um, so uh, I can imagine. My, my point of that is, and again, you don't want to begrudge somebody like what right. they want to do, but there are certain skill sets that you can, I believe you can improve in anything. But when you're going up against other people that have a natural aptitude for it, you're gonna hit a ceiling at some point. Yeah. And if you're honest with yourself and can realize that, like you said, you can find the thing that you can excel in. Right. You know? 
And I guess that's my other point is when I say average, I mean, it's not like, hey, we're all right here. I mean, it's all over the place, right? But like you said, if you average all those people out, you know. So my belief is with most things, you have a ceiling. Even with the things you're really good at, you probably have a ceiling, you know. And at some point, you're going to hit it. Really? That's why bodybuilders turn to uh, – Steroids because your body, limit. your your physiology. No, I don't the do way, steroids. You think I got this body by? <laughs> no, obviously <laughs> not. So the way we're born, though, right? Our physiology will dictate how much muscle you can naturally gain, mm -hmm. you know. And at some point, you'll hit a ceiling. Well, they don't like that because it's their sport, so they have True. to turn to something else to push beyond it. But re in reality, you, they can't. So then, how do you go through that process of like finding out? what you're not averaging. You got to, I think what you have to do is you start by what you do enjoy. Yeah. Like what do you, it kind of goes back to the things we talked about before in our classes that we're trying to do, but like when you stop and you, it's like the blank canvas, like you've talked mm -hmm. about a couple different times is when you stop and you don't have anyone telling you what to do, what gets you up in the morning or what would you actually spend time doing? Like mm -hmm. cliche thing, but what, what sets your heart on fire and then go down that route and keep trying things until something comes to you that like, oh wow, I enjoy this and I'm good at it. Then that's where I think that's where your focus should go. But do you think people enjoy things because they're good at them? That's a good question. Or do they continue to get better at things because they can be both. They like it. I, th I think that's a huge, I mean, I've seen it, it just with art, for instance, I've seen kids that are good at it that really enjoy it. And I've seen kids that are phenomenal at it that just don't really care. So I, I think what you're saying is true, but to back up a little bit, because I meant to say this before, when you said, um, do we only do the things we're good at or whatever? Uh, no, what you do is, again, you have that realistic expectation. So um, if you think you're gonna be a soccer star, but you really don't have the chops for it, that doesn't mean you don't join a men or women's indoor league and play right. for a right. hobby, because if you enjoy it that much, if it's a if it's a love of yours, you're getting the same thing out of it. You're sure. just not a superstar. There's like this, there's this Japanese chart that my brother-in-law showed me that they're using in like business to like find out like where you would be the most successful. And it's like the one in the center is like something that you're really good at and you have a natural aptitude for mm -hmm. and like someone will pay you money for for doing that and yeah. like mm -hmm. if you're able to identify all of those things then apparently that that's both going to make you the most happy and it's going to make you the like, most money make you the most money mm -hmm. i believe that 100 percent. i think if you listen really when i brought up teenagers before they're not the best example for this because it's hard for them to do what i'm about to say but at some point in your life you have to really listen to yourself and and just be honest with yourself and be okay with like yeah i'm not going to be a rock star yeah or i'm not you know like but but again you it, that happiness part i'm not going to be a rock star but i do you know I'll play sing and karaoke. sing relatively well and maybe i you know just i'm happy singing in bars but you know where i think like, that brings you where that could come back though is if you're happier on the outside you're going to bring that to your true. workplace yeah so if you do those things whether you're playing soccer softball or like you have to find enjoyment mm -hmm. outside of work because then that and that carries over sure. to your work right but like in uh, as far as like being able to identify what you're really good at whether that's a specific skill or just like a general set and then applying that to something that you could potentially do for a career. I mean, how do we, are we doing that right now with students? Like, are we giving them the opportunities to explore skill sets? Because mm -hmm. when did I find, like, I, I honestly think it was luck that sure. I happened to be what I hope is decent at teaching. And that was also something that I actually changed to get into. It was like an inclination, but it wasn't anything like, I'm sure I could have fell f flat on my face. Maybe I could have been a terrible teacher, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. Like, I took a gamble. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people have to do that. And sometimes they the same thing. make mistakes. So, like, how do we change what we do for students to, like, make sure that they are getting, getting the opportunity to explore various things that they may or may not be good at, but at least they could do it, like, in a safe environment where they're allowed to fail? I think well, if we go back to the cliche saying, but actually doing it is we always hear, and this is, again, I think it's across the nation, but everyone 
is do what's best for the kids. Right. Only if it makes you look good on paper. Yeah. To what end, right? Yeah, to what end. Yeah. So that's that's just for, like, we'll get to the no but for you in a minute, but, like, just stop putting expectations on them that aren't their own. Right. And then that'll tie in later on with what I want to close with, but I think that that's, has to be the number one thing in schools is – allow them to be average like you said at the other things in order to find their greatness Mm -hmm. and then when you find that don't worry about all the other stuff well i also think when you if we if we talk and and i don't want to go on a rant about that you know about grades for instance how i feel like they're totally everybody wants an a and it's like well what are you going to do to get an a though like what is an a you know a c should be like okay for most kids and i think what that would do whether we're talking grades or just performance and anything if you if you kind of have it in your mind that you may be there, like average, but then you do find out you're a little bit above average, you feel even better about yourself because it's like, oh, I'm actually mm-hmm. a little bit better than this than I, you know, than I expected. Our kids start up here. Like they think they should be here, and then when they don't, they're going this way. And, and what that pressure. does psychologically is like, I'm terrible. Yeah. And it's like, but wait, so like you're, here's, here's average and you're still here. You just want, you thought you were going to be here, but you're not. You're somewhere here. But you think that's bad. Right. And it's like, no, it's not bad at all. You're still above average. Mm-hmm. You know, like right. uh, temper your expectations. And like you said, maybe teachers, parents especially, maybe temper your expectations. Right. Like don't live vicariously. Why do your kids have to be straight A students and go to Harvard? Like, and I, I, this is a different subject, but personally, I feel like parents do that because it's more about them than about their kid. Sure. Yeah. And they want to be able to tell somebody, my kid goes to Harvard. Oh, and yeah. it's like, I'll be fine being like, my kid goes to community college and she's happy. Right. <laughs> like, it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> it's no big deal. No, but for real, if, like, there's only so many things that a school is going to be able to offer you in terms of like experiences of finding things that you're going to be good at. At some point though, like it does fall on you as the individual to put yourself in situations that you might be able to excel in. For example, we don't have a, like if you want to be a chef, there's nothing we can do for you no. at the public school. If that's something you really want to pursue, you need to find resources that are going to help you. Like yeah. go get a job in a kitchen. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you could do Figure that right now. Sure. Okay. Maybe take some cooking classes or find a mentor. Yep. Exactly. There's a lot and of And that's things. how you're going to find that mentor. Right. Like everything that we do here, except for the STEM education part, is more for like a general like experience. And, you know, frankly, we do an okay job at that. But if there's something that, you know, that our students want to do, then they have to go do it. Like yep. they have to take some responsibility on themselves mm-hmm. in order to be great at something. No, that's good. I don't know if I have one I haven't already said. I guess I would just reiterate, no, but for real, like – be just be okay being who you are like you don't have to be a su- you may be a superstar and that's awesome if you are but you know realize that you're you're normal and everything else right. like I can sit here and we get some paper out and I'm sure I can draw something you know no offense a hundred times better than both of you can I but I hope so. yeah but I sh- but I, <laughs> I sure as heck wouldn't be able to bring up as much like history things as you or as, as many scientific things as you because I would be average in both of those mm-hmm. but I know that and that's okay which by the way one more thing here's a real no but for real just thought of it when you're when you are that average person and you know somebody who's not at something well that's even better because then you get to learn something right. from them you know what I mean as mm-hmm. like hey well how do you do this or how do you do that and then you may actually be able to eke up a little bit because it's that person that's going to help right yeah yeah, I mean, I agree. I'm glad we talked about this because I think so many people are average, and I wouldn't say it's a fear of mine, but I I'm don't. Glad you looked at I him don't want to be average in that sense. I'm so super tall for an Asian, so <laughs> super tall. You're like gigantic, five ten. Yeah. yeah, for an Asian. My no, but for real is don't be the person in the retirement center or the nursing home at the end of your life that's full of regret. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the way that you go beyond that is to do stuff that you want to do and don't live your life based on what you think your parents want you to do or what you think your friends or teachers or anyone else wants you to do like if there's something that speaks to you then go do that and then if you don't like it go do something else Mm -hmm. that doesn't work out go do something else but just never stop going after what makes you happy because to me the most depressing thing is to be middle-aged at a job that you hate in a place that you don't want to be in every day is Groundhog Day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's and millions of people are like that. Right. And I think they fall into that average category, but 
be great in what you yeah, love. Yeah, sure. So. All right. I thought that we were just going to punch him. <laughs> yeah, please don't go too far this way. <laughs> so far. Doug is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see YouTube doing it. Doug sucks. He, he's really bad. He smells like beef and cheese. What do I smell like? Beef and cheese. He sits on the throne of lies. <laughs> Ready? You right? You gotta scoot in though, dude. You're always like this. You go back. You lean back too like far it. in the back. I know, but you gotta come in. Get your leg in here. Closer. I'm serious. <laughs> Alright, now that way a little bit. Jesus. Alright. Do you wanna do the camera setup? Nah. Then do what I say, please. I, I did I did exactly Thank what you I said. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We're cutting time. Yes, sir.